Hello, I'm Stephanie Pache with Red Carpet Reports special series for the Santa Fe Film Festival. And we're talking with filmmakers who have projects entered in the festival. Our final interview is the best one. Well, stop. We no, please no. stop. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. <laughs> it's the horror crowd entry in the Santa Fe Film Festival. And today we have Ruben Pla and Hank Braxton. And they're going to talk to us about our favorite subject and this uh, piece that they have entered in the festival. So welcome Ruben and Hank, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. So you guys are um, on the East Coast, is that right? I am. I, I actually live in Colorado now. Oh, so you're close to us, okay. Yep. And there's scary, scary stories in Colorado too. I've but experienced let's... them, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Ruben. Ruben, tell us how this idea came about and how you got connected with Hank to uh, make this amazing feature that we're going to watch. Well, I've been traveling in the horror circles of uh, Los Angeles and Hollywood for a while, and I started thinking, you know, maybe I should uh, talk to some of these people that I, that I know in the horror community, the filmmakers, actors, writers, producers, directors. And then I had a lunch with my buddy Hank, who ended up being my co-producer. And so I got this idea to interview some people that we know. What do you think? And I'll just do it like on my phone and, you know, no big deal. And he goes, oh, I like the idea. Why don't I like bring in some cameras and some lights? I mean, a sound kit. I go, that sounds good. I go, we shoot some of the scenes. <laughs> we shoot some of the scenes in the studio where I work. I go, that sounds great. And then we approach his wife, Ariel Brockfeld, who ended up being my producing partner. And then it just exploded from there. We started talking to different people like Len Shea, Darren Bousman, Mike Mendez, Craig Perry, Jeffrey Reddick, Adam Robotel, all these people that we all knew and they all wanted to do it. They all wanted to come on board and be part of this to reveal their, their secrets to you, their oh. passions, their loves and all that. Is that about right, Hanky? I mean, I just I <laughs> love the, uh, I just love that you were passionate about making it and I just wanted to make sure you used some better gear to, because I remember you, when you were first going to make it, you were going to just shoot all your interviews on an iPhone. Or, well, isn't that like, what the oh, commercial it's says? true. Oh, well, I mean, you can. Nice. Like, yeah. like, you can. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, there's some good looking stuff shot on iPhones and things now. And those cameras are getting better and better. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with a more professional camera, we could also run sound straight into it. So you don't have to sync it in post. And like, mm -hmm. so it just, it, it makes it a lot easier. And, you know, we had the gear and I wanted to make it available to them. He's exactly right. It made such an incredible difference. It brought it literally up from the level of like a home movie to this real production that's actually gotten into all these festivals and all these incredible reviews internationally and nationally. It's just become, I'm, I'm forever indebted to Hank and Ariel. Uh, it literally would have been, you know, fun and whatever, hey, but I probably would have kept it at home just to view at home or something if it hadn't been for them. I just wanted to make that real clear. So tell us about some of the interviews that you have in there. I, I did see in your um, clip, Lynn Shea, who I, Ooh. Lynn Shea? Oh, <laughs> yes, Lynn Shea, who you've had in your festival before. Um, well, I, I love her. First of all, I love her work. So anything she's in, you can expect me to scream in the theater, literally. Nice. So I always catch myself and um, I have to say when I go to horror movies, they make me sit by myself and everyone else that I came with sits in rows in front because l I really do scream. I, I like the escapism and I just go with it. So what were some of the, <laughs> the funny stories? That's cool, that's cool. That you... Funny stories during the shooting, you mean? Yeah. Hank, you got any funny stories? Uh, every time you're on camera. <laughs> you, uh, uh. I'm glad you're behind camera. I'll tell you that right now. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I know it's really not fair to the world to keep this behind the camera, but you know, I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Wait, thank you for you know looking nice. You combed your hair and everything. You like a little lock hanging down. I have to. I, I pretend things are as normal as possible. This is me getting out. <laughs> uh, as far as funny or interesting stories, a lot of revelations that happened during the filming. Things that we found out that. I'm sure Hank didn't know as well as I didn't. Uh, things like, you know, Mike Mendez, one of the people uh, featured in, in the documentary. We find out that his first uh, movie, horror movie he saw was The Hills Have Eyes at age three. 
his family see the hills have eyes at age three. And we're like, and I react like this on camera because I'm like, what? I couldn't believe it. And then things like Lynn Shay admitting to, to, to camera. And it was no prodding. She just wanted, she felt comfortable. She wanted to say things. I say, what's, you know, we're talking about your dark side for the dark side segment. And I ask her, what's your dark side, Lynn? She goes, well, I, I can be like, not very nice sometimes. And that was right. And that was like, whoa. She, she goes, I can be kind of jealous sometimes. And that was a wonderful revelation. And yeah, she's a wonderful person. But uh, all these 37 people that we interviewed, uh, they all said all these different kinds, the way they were raised, how some parents were supportive of them to be in the horror, a filmmaker, some were not supportive, you know, so a lot of fun, interesting revelations like that. Okay, so 30, <laughs> 37 people mm -hmm. crammed into, I think it's an hour and a half or 90 92, minutes. 90, 92 minutes. Wow. That's down from 40, lot. Stephanie, down from 40 hours of footage. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. 40 yeah. hours we had. And at first I had a like a two and a half hour cut and a 215 cut, a two hour cut. I said, no, no, I want to keep going, going, going. And I went to 92, fast, move, quick. And that's where it is now. So what were some of the revelations that you found out in interviewing these folks? Well, like I just mentioned, the one about Lynn saying that she right, can be right. not very nice and jealous. Mike saying about that. I mean, they all had different things i mean um hank you've seen the film <laughs> what anybody else come to mind that said things or revelations that it's tough for me to say that because i like so in that world and have so many of the same experiences you know that's true um, i would say that the the coolest thing for me is like you know meeting people that were involved in making some of my favorite films like uh oh. like demon knight and things like that and hearing there's their their experiences on much bigger budgets were very similar to experiences I've had on smaller budgets. And it really does start to feel more like a, you know, a tight knit family. And like, we all share similar backgrounds and stories. It's like even more close knit than you thought working yeah. on it. When, you know, at times working in Hollywood, it can really feel dog eat dog. Mm -hmm. um, and even in the horror world, it does here and there, there are still clicks, but I would say overall people in the horror were are more supportive than in a lot of other artistic communities I've been in. Yeah, That's I, an excellent. I'm, I'm sorry, I was gonna, just on the tail of that, uh, excellent point, Hank, about things like Demon Knight. You know, you got to meet, you were obviously there on the set when Cyrus Forrest was there talking about Demon Knight and, you know, making that uh, and Ernest Nickerson directing it. And, you know, all these inside stories about Billy Zane and all, it was just really, really interesting stuff. And then, because Cyrus is a good friend of mine and, you know, we, we each have like little things that we know him and he knows her and she knows him. You know, it's not like every single per person knows every other person in the horror crowd, but it's like a spider web, you know, the web going out, people know each other. Really cool. Right. So, Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah. So let's talk about the, ty the type of films, because it's not just like the scary um, Frankenstein or zombie kind of films that you reached out to talk to people. Um, I think you had some Jaws in there. Yeah, well, yeah, we have some Jaws, the Jaws Club. We, we also talk about fantasy films mm -hmm. uh, like Jason and the Argonauts and those kind of things, Sinbad. And we also talk a lot about sci-fi, of which Hank is a master. We have a whole segment on Alien. <laughs> What's well, true? Uh, right. Hank knows Alien and Aliens and Terminator and all that stuff, well, you know, really, really well. So I, you know, what, do you, what do you think about that, Hank, us having included the sci-fi element into the film? Maybe it's just me, but uh, they've always been hand in hand in, in my world. Like it's, mm -hmm. and, and I, and I, you know, might get, get shot for saying it, but I, it's like, I put sci-fi at the top and then like horror was like my second go-to. Um, so I was, <laughs> I rented out both of those sections at the VHS store way back in the day, but yeah, I mean, they just go so well together and, and oftentimes they're dealing with the same subject matter. So yeah, I still totally. scream in Jaws when I watch it twice a year, once on 4th of July, and then once whenever <laughs> I see catch it on cable or whatever. That's cute that you're watching on 4th of July. I kind of like that, actually. <laughs> yeah, and I funny. <laughs> take a picture and share it with all my friends. It's my annual thing. <laughs> Do you ever, like, go out to the beach by the, by the shore and just kind of lay there in a chase lounge and look out to see if, if you'll see a big fin or something coming all by? All the time. Yeah. Do yeah. you do that? all the time you know i, I used to, to i used I'm to tell us if anyone that like i love when someone loves a movie so much that they can watch it every year and get yeah entertainment and and it's that's wonderful yeah there's that several of them that i watch more than once but 
Jaws is my celebratory annual festival of 4th of July. That is, <laughs> in fact, we watch all of them. Not all of them are as great as the first one, even with all its flaws, but you know, it's, it's one of those um, fun times I like to be thematic in my uh, viewing, but. Well, um, that's kind of what we try to do with the film. I mean, we, we, the, the opening segment it shows uh, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, and then it comes forward to Jaws, Alien and Exorcist showing there's a whole gamut, a whole arc of cinema, of horror. And then who are these people that made these movies that you know kept us up at night, as I say in the, in the thing. And then now we come to the modern day filmmakers. Who are these people? Are they like mm -hmm. crazy weirdo people? Or are they like regular people? Like Hank, Hank is a family man, just had a beautiful baby up one, <laughs> we did. And you know, there are others who will like have kids and take them to dance class or take them to hockey. Well, Hank's the big hockey guy. And uh, so they're not all crazy weirdos. There are a couple right. in the film that are. <laughs> we should remain nameless, but they're still nice people. They're not all these. A lot of people have this, this image of horror filmmakers, like, you know, crazy Boris Karloff looking people hiding in right. the, under the stairs, the people under the stairs. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Some dogs like that. <laughs> Cujo. I have three of them. You yeah. have three Cujos? You had three St. Bernards? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I have three dogs I, I refer to as Cujo on occasions like this. Because I had a St. Bernard when I was growing oh. up when I was a kid. So I, that's wow. why I said that right away. I, I, I used to, I was a little boy and I used to ride him around like a horse because he was enormous. <laughs> right. Yeah. So right. I mean, you said Cujo, I go, oh my God, she's got well, a St. Bernard. Th thematic again with our conversation on horror because yeah. what mother wants to live through that or father? Yeah. Right. No. So um, this is exciting to have your piece in the festival. Um, so what, um, what are you working on next? Are you working on something else? Well, Hank and I- just have had that. Hank and I uh, work together a lot. And uh, we literally just finished shooting a film. A title okay, Hank, or not yet? Yeah, uh, we just finished shooting a, a great dinosaur flick called uh, Jurassic Hunt, like a hunt for Jurassic. I want to be real clear. You like that, Hank? Mm -hmm. Really clear. So it's Jurassic Hunt, and we just shot that where the you know these guys come in, uh, military type guys, you know, come in hunting dinosaurs. And before that, we shot Dragon Soldiers, where now it's a dragon, and an elite squad, like a commando squad, comes in, special forces kind of guys come in and 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 uh, are trying to get rid of a, a town that has a dinosaur, uh, pardon me, a dragon problem. So we shot those two almost back to back. And Hank, the first one's released already, Dragon Soldiers. Uh, which Hank directed, uh, in case I didn't make that clear, Hank directed both of those. And I was in them and his wife, Arielle, was, was in there too. And the first one, she produced the second one. And then the, the second one, Jurassic Hunt, is, uh, what's the story on that, Hank? What's the releasing on that? We know. Which ones? Jurassic. Oh, I mean, okay. it'll, it'll, be out some, it'll be out sometime this year. This year, okay, cool. So that's what we've been doing. If I had uh, to guess, I'd say July. Okay. Both great action-packed, films, military flavor, mm -hmm. monsters, whether they be dragons or, or dinosaurs. And, you know, Hank has just really good eye. Sorry, Hank, but I gotta say it, has a really good eye. He and I did a super low budget uh, a film that shot in his house, like cabin type atmosphere called Chemical Peel. Look that up, guys, which is his wife is one of the stars of, and I'm in it. And uh, just has a really good eye for, for using the camera the best possible way at the lowest possible budget. Very Corman-like if you have to be. Although Jurassic Hunt and Dragon Soldiers, the, 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 the budgets were a little higher, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> than before. Five dollars <laughs> more? They, no, no, not, no, no. No, the, the dragon and the, and the dinosaurs look pretty darn good, I mm -hmm. gotta tell you. So no. Yeah. So where can we see those? Um, I would hope the hot sci-fi channel, but. Um... <laughs> um, Chemical Peel and Unnatural, I think are both on Amazon Prime right okay. now. So I think good. you can watch them for free. Um, Dragon Soldiers is Dragon Soldiers just came out in December, so it's still like a rental or purchase thing. So I know you can buy it or rent it on DVD. It's mm -hmm. in Redbox. It's on iTunes. It's oh, it's really well, fun. It's, it's really fun. It is a it is a fun movie. I will say it's yeah, it's lower budget, but it's if you just want to watch a fun movie, it's fun. Well, a lot of times in talking to filmmakers, you know, we talk about just the film that they are you know representing, but it's always great to talk about your other work. Because, you know, if they're going to watch this, they're going to want to see more of what you're doing. 
mm-hmm. no matter from a documentary to a fun sci-fi flick because mm-hmm. who doesn't mm-hmm. like those i do, we do. i like those too. <laughs> i like horror i like sci-fi i mean just be clear i like fantasy too though you know fantasy, I, the fantasy stuff you know the old yeah. Sinbad and Jason and the Argonaut movies. I love those. And we talk about those in the horror crowd. Uh, Russell, Russell Mulcahy, who directed Highlander and many uh, Resident Evil 3 and all these other great things. He, you know, he was influenced and it comes out in a documentary very much by these old fantasy films. When the Cyclops comes around the corner and he looks up, he goes, I want to be able to do that. That, that was the moment that inspired yeah. him and everybody. A lot of other, other filmmakers have their moments. Uh, but that one always stands out for me because of the whole fantasy thing. He's Cyclops, you know. Wow. Well, we're excited to see this, and it's going to be screening um, tonight. I think at tonight, seven, like, seven o'clock. Yes. So we have to get this out to get everybody watching. Yeah. Seven p.m. Seven p.m. Uh, that's uh, seven p.m. Pacific. I, I mean, uh, East Mountain. Right. Oh, mountain. No, mountain Pacific? time. Mount. Okay. So, so it's nine, and then it, so it's nine p.m. Pacific. Is that what it is? No. No, it's six p.m. Pacific. 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay, whatever you say, sounds good. I, uh, it's on the website. I've had <laughs> to spend year learning time zones because yeah, moving from Los Angeles to Albuquerque, mm-hmm. yeah, gets a little confusing. If you don't have your, your calendar set, it really yeah. messes you up on your computer. Well, if people want to watch it, I post it on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I put the link to Santa Fe Film Festival, and it'll okay. show you the correct time for your time zone. So, right, absolutely. You know, you, yeah, you guys can go. No, they'll be able to watch no it. No matter where you are and check it out. It's only showing tonight one time. So if you want to see it and you haven't seen it, check right. it out. Right. No, I, I have my ticket. I bought a pass for the festival. Cool. So I'm Excellent. going to be tuning in oh, cool, cool. along with the thousands of other people that want to see horror and want to get the insider look at people that make horror, right? And Sounds what great. what they're doing. And it's what a wonderful uh, idea. And thank you so much for sharing with us today, Ruben and Hank, we appreciate your time and we're gonna look for your other works. We'll also be sharing back a link um, to the article. This will be on YouTube and um, we'll be sharing on our, the Santa Fe Film Festival as well. So people can find you and find your other projects because that's what we're here for. And also I'm gonna be at the award show virtually uh, the night of the awards on Sunday. Oh, and Sunday, I'll be doing a little, a little thing there uh, with, uh, with Nani and them, so right. to watch the award show too. And maybe I'll tell you a little secret. Yes, Nani is doesn't like horror; it scares her too much. But That's she funny. likes the category. She's like so excited about your film. It, I was going to say because she, she, I spoke to her several times and zoomed, and she seemed very enthusiastic about oh, it. Oh no, she is, so, but she's not a she doesn't like not a horror person. Much. Okay, but well, she does. Are. She does love the genre for entertainment for mm-hmm. other people. Mm-hmm. cool cool great i thought that was funny because she's like oh she's so excited she's talking about it and i'm like okay but you're not a, you don't like to watch it she doesn't like to get scared yeah. i like to get scared because i like to yell and scream <laughs> and have a reason for it <laughs> okay great. guys thank you thank so you. much and thank you so much stephanie on this project and hank congratulations on your baby uh, and, <laughs> and we'll see you later bye guys bye okay. hanky <laughs> all right take care yeah.